What's good guys, Mom Burning Kid here back again and with some more comic reviews for you guys as always back again because uh, I've been feeding it, reading and finishing a lot of books that I, I plan to have reviewed and one of those books that I was waiting and waiting and waiting to come out and trade because I, I said to myself when it was out in just single issues, I was like, I'm gonna wait for it to come out of trade. And that book is The Death of Doctor Strange. This is uh, written by Jed McKay and artwork by Lee Garbett. And this is a this was a part of the five part mini series that came out this came out a while or not too long ago but I was waiting waiting for this bad boy to come out on trade paperback and I may and I must say even though this book has been out and the series has been out for some I still will not spoil too much for you guys because not only will I review this you're going to get into another review so don't want to spoil too much but this was great this was excellent mr mckay you did a good job on this mr mckay really goes into true detail of explaining just how important Doctor Strange is to the Marvel Universe. If he is not there, if there is no Sorcerer Supreme, what does that mean for the Earth plane, the existence? What will happen? And we see in the beginning of this, we just see how much Doctor Strange is worth, what he does on a daily basis. We've seen this before with other writers. Other writers have done the same thing. Mark Wade did a really good job of it, showcasing that. But also, it, it keeps it goes on to the fact that we also got to remember now. At one point, Doctor Strange had his ability back, almost had that that really good ability to be a surgeon again. So he was doing two jobs after a while. Later on, he was not only just the Sorcerer Supreme of Earth, but he was also he was back to being what he was, what his God-given talent was, the best neurosurgeon. I guess in New York. So yeah, we get to see that. Uh, one of my, my one of my uh, favorite parts in the first issue was seeing Doctor Strange and this this guy, these cops are, and this guy is like shooting out fire, and he's and it's coming out of his mouth, and he's spewing out all these profits and stuff like that. And and Doctor Strange comes, he gets out of his sippy clothes and into his, and he's just like, gentlemen, uh, I will handle this. And they're just like, who are you to? And his and the one of the cops, the cop partner, the other partner, his partner was like, I think this is his job. Like this is what he does, and he's able to help. The story, the first issue ends with Doctor Strange's death. I will spoil that. Um, he, someone breaks into the uh, Sanctum Sanctorum, and there's a battle. But you can tell this is kind of a straight who done it thriller you can see that Doctor Strange kind of knows who this person is and even when Doctor Strange is at his weakest he shows no fear he shows no fear he's like if he knew death would come sooner or later and it comes and everybody feels it and, and I love how the dialect ex explores that too like everybody felt his death from those who are closest to him, like Wong and people like that, allies like uh, Reed Richards, even Thor felt it. It was just like they all felt it. And it becomes, the story becomes a who done it thriller. A who done it, who killed Doctor Strange. And we're seeing people from Baron Mortal returns and even classic characters like Cassilius who we haven't seen in a while, but because of his role in the first Doctor Strange movie, they have reintroduced him. 
um, and Wong is pissed. He is already looking at Baron Mordo like, you did this, and you know, Mordo's all like, kind of like, you know, all re re like I, you know, someone stole my. J he wanted to do this and things like that. The typical arch villain route, um, and it's really good. It was really fun. And then something crazy happens that almost Doctor Strange, you would expect Doctor Strange to to, uh, to have up his sleeve. And I gotta ha have to spoil this a little bit. So basically what happens is Doctor Strange was prepared for his death. And in doing so, if this did happen, he somehow was able to contact his younger self when he was still calling himself Doctor Strange Master of the Dark Arts. So we get a younger version of Doctor Strange that comes to the present. I was a little bit like, really? Like, okay. But I enjoyed that too. But having doing so still, the Sorcerer Supreme is gone. And we're starting to see that the walls that protect, that the Sorcerer, the Sorcerer Supreme of Earth have protected is the barriers are coming down and invaders are now invading Earth. And we're talking about from all different dimensions, not just the dark dimension, but we're talking about other dimensions, even a, dim a group which played the big antagonist in this called them the Three Mothers. These weird looking crazy, one of them looks like a bulimic ghost. The other is Look, has like a almost looks like it has the the uh, Venus de Milo face, but it her body is just made up of worms. The other one looks like a badass warrior, and they have come to Earth looking for Clea. Uh, so it becomes that routine because they want to feed the Sorcerer Supreme of the Dark Dimension to their child. What I also love about this, we get to see different Sorcerer Supremes, like, for example, um, Ileana Rasputin is in this, and she is the Sorcerer Supreme of Limbo. So we get to see that the Sorcerer Supreme title means a lot more than what you think, and I really enjoyed that. Um, but it is a mystery of solving who did it, who killed Doctor Strange, who killed who killed him and his well, Strange's older self. And with that, I will not spoil who it is. I was not surprised. I was a little surprised because I thought it was going to be somebody really way back. Like, for example, um, I thought it was going to be somebody like an old school Doctor Strange villain like Silver Dagger. I would that if that if that had happened, I would have that would have blew my mind. But who it turned out to be was interesting, and how what happened is more interesting. But it's a it's a cat and mouse game. It's a beat the clock. You see in allies from you know from the Avengers to the X Men, you know everybody who Doctor Strange has kind of had a relationship with is defending this man and defending his honor um but it is very sad at the end because you know dr strange is dead and he dies and it's very touching with him and clea who is his wife remember clea is his wife and dr strange leaves her something but this was really good. I don't want to spoil a lot for you guys, but it's a really good, if you like a mystery, a whodunit mystery, kind of like Clue and all that, and you trying to use your detective skills to figure out what, who did it, this is for you. If you're a Doctor Strange fan, you're gonna love this. This truly showcases more of what Doctor Strange, not just his role as a source of freedom, just how, important he is that's the big thing that I got from this miniseries is just how important Doctor Strange is 
This is really good. Mr. McKay, you did a great job. And the artwork, very good indeed by Mr. Uh, Garbett. I really enjoyed this very much. And that leads us to strange number one. Had to do this back to back, guys. First of all, I got the uh, variant cover. I love that. Y'all know who art that is. I don't have to tell you. But the strange, this cover, this, this series picks up, I think, a few months right after the death of Doctor Strange. Jed McKay does the artwork, I mean the writing, as again, and we see Clea. Now this is where I, I kind of have to spoil a little bit. Clea is left the Cloak of Levitation and the Eye of Akimoto. And so basically, in some sense, Clea is the Source Supreme of Earth. But she's also the Source Supreme of the Dark Dimension. So the, the series, the story picks up where she's fighting somebody called the, uh, what was his name again? I'm forgetting his name. Uh, I'll kind of even show you a little bit. Uh, he, She's fighting uh, somebody called the Harvard, Harvest Man. Here he is right here. I'll show you. There you go. That dude right here. And there's Clea. And Clea... Her big thing is trying to resurrect Doctor Strange. So we see her in the Sanctum Centorum, and there's a knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. And, you know, she's like, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. I can't believe I still got to open doors, you know. And who's standing at the front door? Well, let me show you. Victor Von Doom. Victor comes in and Clea's like, you want some coffee? It's, I don't like this this plane's coffee. Now, Dark Dimension coffee is where it's at. It's, I'm like, there's coffee in Dark Dimension? I was cracking up when I read that. And Dr. Doc Doom's like, no. And then he's like, give me the Eye of Agamotto and the Cape of Levitation. And Clea's like, no. You know, she's basically like, no, you're not getting it. And he's, he's, he goes, Victor, Doom's going into this, it, you know, you're not the source of Reem. And, and Clea is kind of, kind of cocky with herself, but she's like, um, well, technically I am. See, because Steven was my husband. So, um, yeah, that, that's going to stay with the family. And she goes into detail about, yes, a strange was the Sorcerer Supreme. Now, in the Dark Dimension, we don't go into the whole last names, but she goes into detail, and that's one of the key mo key things in this is she plays up, yes, I am Clea Strange, and I'm the Sorcerer Supreme, so hence the name, Strange. Um, and Dr. Doom is like, you know that's not how it works, blah, 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 and, you know, they're ready to duke it out, and Clea is like, she ain't backing down, she's like, bring it you're like come on and you know she just ransacks doom she's like oh well all you you want that you want to be the sorcerer supreme but where were you at where were you at when my husband was saving the world and with his allies against the the three mothers you know and doom's like i will tell the vashanti and she's like go ahead and tell them i don't care like she i love how clea is just like she don't give two fucks like she like go ahead and tell them i don't care and i love how she just burns doctor's doom i love doctor doom he's one of my he's my favorite villain in comics but to see her get under his skin and doom can't like you know like come back with a, a better retort was classic i love how <laughs> wong walks in he's like was that doom that just left he's like she's like yeah the concept still is remains is that she wants to resurrect Doctor. Uh, she wants to resurrect Steve, and she, but she still has no idea how to do it. Um, and that's the big thing about this. And we get to see different sides of, I guess, New York that 
there's an area in New York that has all these charms and it's where magical beings go to shop, you know, for stuff like that. Like she wanted dark dimension coffee. So they had to go like to this little flea market that's being protected by, you know, uh, you know, all kinds of ruins. So no normal mundane eyes can see it. So I thought that was really cool playing that off. Um, there is a there's a a, a a real series in this uh, in terms of some terrorists they call themselves the, the nobody 23 and they try to they start killing a lot of people and Clea goes in the action and she don't play for keeps she, she takes them out big time and Wong kind of gets on her like you're the source of freedom you're not supposed to kill people she killed people like she she killed people like and she's like well if they she lucky they were in my dimension because I would have done far worse and Wong is just like but Clea you're not in the dark dimension you're on earth like chill like and I love I'm loving this dynamic between Wong and Clea and it's really it's really good to see um but by the end of this series uh she is senses a presence on this plane and it turns out to be somebody very vicious and I gotta show it to you it's the harvest the harvest harvest man that, that's a real wooden name by the way but also look who he resurrected well kinda didn't resurrect it Eric Masterson Thunderstrike Zombie Thunderstrike and it ends right there this was a great start I loved it thought it was great I loved seeing Clea just be herself but not so wooden because over the years I, I feel like some writers have written Clea to be so one dimensional so we gotten to see her kind of we, seeing more of her personality and seeing more of her, you know, how she felt about Stephen. You know, she she, you know, all the hopes. She even says, "I'm I'm I am Clea Strange," because in the dark dimension, as she said, last names don't mean anything to them. So it's really good. If Jed Mc, if Jed McKay McKay stays on top like that. That, it's going to be a good series. Um, will she resurrect Steven? I don't know. But we know he's not going to stay dead for long. Nobody stays dead in comics for long, too long. You know, but it was good. Excuse me. It was good. I really enjoyed it. Both Doctor Strange, Death of Doctor Strange, I recommend. If you're a Strange fan, get this. And if you want to continue... The Adventures of the New Sorcerer, Sorceress Supreme, but they keep saying Sorcerer. Um, check out Strange number one. Can't wait to issue number two, but it was great, guys. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I will be back with more down the line. Some from Marvel, some from DC, some trade reviews, but a lot of independent books. I will continue to put the spotlight on indie books, big and small, on Indie Showcase. But these, this was good stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this, my geeks, and I will see you guys next time, as always. Deuces.